everybody welcome to my cozy corner this is a real fire I promise it's not just a backdrop that I have I really wanted to just share it off though before I started this vlog I hope you are all doing well my name is Shuba if you are new here if you've been here before thanks for watching another video this is going to be an exciting video because I am trying something new and this is a reading vlog styled video but I'm going to take you around Kansas City a little bit. It is a weekend vlog and I plan on reading one book which I will talk about. But there is a brand new bookshop in Kansas City that is opening up near me. And there's going to be some antique mall shopping as well. And some running content. Barely running content, but it's still running content. So I thought that would be fun to change things up a bit while I also share with you what I'm reading. A little bit of a story. If you have watched my four thrillers, video that I recently uploaded. It should be uploaded by now. I will link it up top and also down below. You'll know that I tried to do a 24 hour readathon and it failed miserably because the footage that I got ended up being in slow motion and without any volume. It's very sad actually. There's a button for my camera. I have the Sony uh, ZV1F or something like that. Don't really know what type it is, but there's a button next to the record button that you can press and it's really just a mess. Now I am traumatized and I'm never going to press that button again and I will always make sure that this is recording in video format. <laughs> but anyway, regardless, I read a bunch of thrillers and this book that I'm going to mention and talk about in this vlog was going to be a part of that 24 hour readathon, but I decided to just separate it out and I also never got to it in my 24 hours anyway. The book that I plan on reading for this weekend reading vlog is The Broken Marriage by Elena Wilkes. Now this is an advanced reader copy that I did get from NetGalley. So thank you NetGalley, as if NetGalley is a human being and watching this video. But still thank you for giving me the opportunity to read this book and review it for future readers. This book comes out September 3rd. 3rd or September 4th I believe so it comes out this fall. I am a big fan of thrillers. I feel like lately I've been reading a lot of romance books and literary fiction books and I just need a palate cleanser. I just need a good thriller and that is why I started my 24-hour readathon and I read four thriller books and I'm not going to talk about those books here, but you'll have to watch that video. But I was going to add The Broken Marriage to the list of books just because I've had this book sitting for a really long time and I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet. Didn't really feel like it, but the time has come. We are going to read The Broken Marriage. Now, I don't really know much about this story at all. I just know it's a psychological thriller. It says this perfect couple is hiding something deadly their broken marriage so what i know about this is that we have our main character her name is hannah and after 17 years she shows up at matt and rachel's doorstep during a snowstorm and she is there because she just has some secrets from her past that she wants to share and get out and off of her chest and just finally come to terms with it but also figure out what really happened that's the gist of it. It's what I know. The reason why I chose to read this book is because there aren't very many reviews on NetGalley or Goodreads for this, but it did get, I think, above a 3.5. So I was excited to pick this up and give my own thoughts for this digital arc that I got. I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog and the non-reading content and let me know in the comments down below if you had fun with it or if you just want purely fast-paced silent videos of me reading because I can do that too but I just thought this would be fun. Thank you so much for watching and I will get this video started. Enjoy!
I started reading The Broken Marriage by Elena Wilkes and I wanted to give you my first reading update. I am officially 33%. We have our main characters. We their, their names are Rachel and Matt. They are a married couple and they are what seem to be perfect. However, we know that underneath everything they have secrets that slowly start to unravel and we know this based off the synopsis one evening an old friend named hannah shows up and they haven't seen her in 17 years so it's been a really long time she randomly shows up at their doorstep during a snowstorm and she's there because she has some trauma from her past and she's there to talk about it to cope and process and start to move on so that is a synopsis and now the story starts off with the prologue which is a little bit alarming because what happens in the prologue is that something is wrong with hannah and she is crying and she's freaking out she's in an abandoned house and she calls rachel for help the thing is is that she has blood all over herself she didn't know who else to call she says oh no do not call the cops like the cops can't get involved she's worried because she doesn't want anybody else to know that she's there so rachel comes to get her and to save her and then she says that no one can know about tonight and that they have to promise that they'll help each other out and be together for each other no matter what happens in the future and so that makes me think that one something really bad happens two i think that the prologue is actually taking place in the future and when we start the story we're gonna go back into the present time period and start to go through the sequence of events that leads us up to the prologue so that is what i'm thinking and it sounds like rachel and hannah are really good friends and they can count on each other then i start reading the chapters and as we get going, it doesn't necessarily seem that they're that close of friends, especially if they haven't talked or seen each other in 17 years. So let's talk a little bit about our main characters. We have Hannah, who has never felt like she's had anyone to take care of her or be there for her or support her. And she is more quiet and reserved and keeps to herself. And I think it's because she deals with something in the past that so we'll talk about that really affects who she is as a human being now. We have Rachel, who is the other main character, Hannah's best friend, and Rachel is not really seen in the best light in this story. So Rachel is married to Matt, and Hannah, Matt, and Rachel have known each other for years, so 17 plus years. Matt and Hannah had an incident where they kissed and Matt is in love with Hannah. I think Hannah has feelings for Matt. Rachel is in love with Matt obviously because they're married. I guess not obvious because it is called the broken marriage. Anyway, <laughs> so there's this love triangle going on. Then we learn that in 2006, there's a party that everyone's at and Hannah gets raped. I think that is the event that really triggered who she is now. And I think she's slowly starting to come forward with it. Mind you, we're still here in a snowstorm and this love triangle is happening in one household and hannah can't go anywhere because she can't leave the house with the character development i've noticed that with 33 percent of the way through hannah is just dealing with so much trauma and sadness and she's just so afraid and she's trying to confide in rachel and all this time rachel had no idea which is strange because they're supposed to be best friends and matt doesn't know and matt is in love with hannah and he tries to keep telling her that he has been wanting to leave rachel for a really long time and all this stuff so not only is hannah having to deal with her own issues but now she's also having to deal with matt's issues under one roof during the snowstorm. I will say that the plot has been very intriguing so far. 
I am surprised that I'm already 33% of the way through. So it seems like this is a very short story. There's a lot going on with the plot right now. And there's little pieces that keep piling up. And I'm interested to see where this is going to go. There's one point where Hannah thinks she sees somebody outside that's not Matt. We're adding paranoia and shock to Hannah's mixed bag of emotions right now as well. It went, and she's in a house that she's never really been in either. And she finds out that her rapist is supposedly going to get let go from jail and be released. I know, there's a lot happening. <laughs> with the plot, we have this present timeline with the snowstorm and everything that's happening with these three characters, but this story is in Hannah's point of view. So we also hear a lot of Hannah's internal monologue and what she's thinking and processing with this storyline and then there are also pieces where she talks about the party and what happened in the past like how hannah met rachel and how hannah and matt became friends and she goes back in time and she brings up the past and we read about the night of the party overall tensions are very high right now <laughs> And I am very stressed out for Hannah, our main character, because she just seems to be having a lot going on right now. And I feel really bad for her. And I hope that by the end of the story, she gets the closure that she needs and she deserves. I can't even imagine. And maybe like there is never going to be real closure, especially after something like that has happened to somebody but I hope that she has some peace. Also, who knows who we can trust? Matt is going around and telling Hannah that Rachel is a terrible human being. And then Rachel says that she's there for Hannah, but she hasn't been for 17 years. So I don't really know who I can even trust in this story right now, besides Hannah, and I get her point of view because that is a point of view that we're reading from. I also wanted to talk a little bit about Elena Wilkes, her writing style. I have never read a story by Elena before. Her writing style is really easy to follow along. I think that she does a really good job of describing and setting up the story. It's not too fast paced but it's not too slow either which i think is what is necessary especially for a thriller like this where you have one pov and multiple pieces that disconnect that we're trying to figure out how they do connect and what is the truth and what actually happened so i think she does a really good job of that especially when we're jumping from the present timeline to when we are at the party and we are recollecting the events that happen in the past that have to do with Hannah. Overall, I do like this story so far. I think it's very fast paced. It is leaving me questioning what is real and who is the bad guy or the villain in this situation, which I guess we kind of know, but I really want to know what happened at the party and I want to solve this mystery. It says at the bottom of the book down here, an unputdownable psychological thriller with a jaw-dropping twist. I am ready for my twists. I love a good twist. It's definitely unputdownable right now. Tomorrow I'm going to a brand new bookstore and plant shop that opened up in Kansas City. Hopefully I will get some footage of the new bookstore and then I think Mark and I are gonna stop by the antique mall and see if there's any fun things to pick up. Other than that I have no plans so I will be reading a lot tomorrow and we'll see how far I get through and if I can get you a reading update. All right talk to you soon.
morning everybody it's the next day yesterday we went to that new bookshop and it was super cute i'm very excited for them we need more independent bookstores especially in kin city but also all around the country i ended up getting a few books and then we got some plants i am getting ready to go on an 11 mile run this is the longest run that I'll be doing for my half marathon training program. The half marathon is in three weeks and I am terrified, but it's gonna be great. I woke up at 5.30 this morning so I can read, have my breakfast, stretch a little, and get ready to go. My goal is to head out the door soon and start running at 7.30. I think the sun should be rising by then too so it'll be nice and it's not too cold outside i think it'll feel good while i run i plan on listening to a frida mcfadden audiobook i don't actually know i think i picked one up from the library don't know which one it is i'll let you know but i wanted to give you a quick reading update before i head out the door this book is very triggering so i would be careful if you are planning on reading this because there's a lot of talk about rape and sex offenders and it's really really sad our main character hannah she's going through a lot right now and she is trying to recollect all of her facts and find out what actually happened the night when she got raped and she ends up meeting with the guy who is in jail right now who she thinks did it so i've started to notice that rachel she reminds me a lot like blake lively from a simple favor and regina george she is just very selfishly but it doesn't come off as, as selfish the thing is it she makes it seem like it's about hannah but it's actually about herself. It's about Rachel. She's very self-centered in a quiet way. And I just hate that, especially with what Hannah's going through right now. We still don't know who to trust. Like I still can't tell what's, what's actual fact and what really happened. And we are 66% of the way through, so we're two-thirds of the way done. So the fact that we still don't know what's the real truth is making me want to keep reading. Keep read. Keep reading. It's very good, though. I am unsure of Matt, and I don't really know what his intentions are. He says that he loves Hannah, but I just don't know who can be trusted at this point. <laughs> I'm hoping to go on my run and then come back, shower, get ready and whatnot, and then finish up the story. I forgot to mention that we are dog sitting Dobby. Oh yeah, that's a big stretch. Oh my goodness. You're a big yogi. He's the sweetest. My parents are out of town, so. We have Dobby for the weekend. Mowgli just turned eight years old. He's a big boy now. He's just always uninterested. But we have Dobby. My little cutie. Okay. Bye. Show you Dobby in the wild. 
you so cute. I finished The Broken Marriage. I think I would give it a three out of five stars. The last third part of the book was just a lot slower than the first two thirds of the book. I know I mentioned how it was very fast paced and quick, but the shift in pacing by the last third of the book was very slow and it kind of got boring. There was just so much going on that I just lost track of what was really happening. And so it was just really slow by the end of it. This book has a lot of complexities in terms of relationships. We're introduced to a lot of characters and I think that's why you have to really keep up with the story just to know what is going on. You have to understand like each character's plot point and where they're at within the story. It makes things interesting for sure, but it was just a little bit boring. By the end of the story, we unravel all of the secrets that we have. There's, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of different plot points going on. And so all of the secrets get unraveled between Hannah's secrets and Rachel and Matt have their own secrets that they've been hiding. And by the end of it, we do get that. I will say though that the author Elena Wilkes does a good job with exploring the intricacies of the characters while building all of that suspense. And by the end of it, when we do unravel all of those secrets, I gotta say I did not see it coming. And I'm not gonna spoil it for you so you can read it on your own, but definitely did not see it coming. With the main characters as we're reading the story, everyone is so fixated on Rachel and I know I'd mentioned that before how Rachel reminded me of Blake Lively's character in Simple Favor but then also reminded me of Regina George from Mean Girls how everyone is obsessed with her. I felt like that in the story and maybe that was written on purpose just so we can focus on Rachel as a plot point as we build with the other main points of the story and maybe that was the reason why she did it but i was just getting so frustrated with the characters and their fixation on her i did not really like that very much especially by the last two thirds of the story hannah allison emily matt all of these characters were just obsessed with rachel i feel like by the end of the story we do learn what happens at the party and all of the events that do take place and by the end of the story I think Hannah figures everything out but the ending was just rushed a little bit and I know that the events that that did take place shocked me and how the story ended I did not expect but I didn't like the resolution of the conflict that was built and created. I just wasn't satisfying to me. Overall, I did enjoy the story and I do recommend The Broken Marriage by Elena Wilkes as long as you understand the trigger warnings and what the story is about because it does get very dark. It was quick, fast paced. Most of it, like I mentioned, the last bit of it was a little bit slow for me, but it picked up by the end and not my favorite thriller but it was still an easy one an easy one to read i hope that helps let me know if you do decide to read it this comes out i believe september 3rd i am going to leave the vlog off here i hope you enjoyed this reading vlog and just going around town with me. It was really fun to film and maybe I just need to do a little bit more of that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you are interested in reading the story after my small review and thoughts and I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.